Something really cool happened the other day when I was out on the court with Taylor. He started out hitting his forehands like this. They were often landing shorter in the court and just didn't have as much pace on them as these ones that he was hitting later on in the session. Check out the difference in speed between this one and this one. From contact to the time it's crossing the baseline, look how much faster this one gets there as opposed to this one. Your opponents are going to feel that difference. I did a little math based on frame rate and was able to calculate that this shot is 21% faster than this one. That's significant. I felt the difference and I'm about to show you exactly when I felt the newfound speed and power on his forehand. A little later in this filming session, Taylor and I were getting some specific footage that I needed for a different video. I've been across the net from Taylor many times before and I have a sense of what he can do with all his shots in terms of power and location. Well, he had also been hitting forehand slices as well as backhand slices and drives throughout this session in addition to forehand drives, so I briefly forgot that he had some more juice on his forehand drive now. I was up at the non-volley zone line expecting a certain pace from him that I had seen many times before in past sessions, so I was prepared for that. And boom, he clocked one right by me at a speed I had never seen from him before. I mean, take a look at my reaction. I think it says it all. What? This is the moment I knew that I was dealing with a totally different beast now when it came to his forehand. I had been put on notice and I now had to raise my game to meet his new level. My split step had to be more on point, I had to be more alert, and my hands had to be faster. It was pretty cool to watch all of this unfold right before my very eyes. Alright, so what exactly was he doing differently from a forehand like this to a forehand like this and what accounts for the big jump in speed? Well, there's a few things to look at, so let's break it down. An incredibly important change happens right at the very beginning, and without this change, several of the other upcoming changes couldn't happen. So pay attention here, because this is huge, and so many players are not doing this at all, and I'd really love for that to change. It's something I've talked about in other videos, but I've never had such a realistic and candid example as I do here. This was not scripted or constructed. Things just finally clicked for him and we just so happened to catch it on camera, which was cool. So this key, key, to emphasize key, change is more separation between the rotation in the hips and the shoulders. That can be seen by drawing a line between his hips and between his shoulders on both shots. We can see on this one that the lines are parallel, which means that his shoulders and hips are turned the same amount. On this one, the lines are not parallel, so we can see that the shoulders are turned more than the hips, which is what we want. His kinetic chain is more loaded on this one. You also get a clue to his better load because we can see how he gets his left shoulder more tucked under his chin, which is just more confirmation that he gets a really good shoulder turn. So this better load up, thanks to more turn in the hips and shoulders, is the first step to most of what's about to come, so let's keep going. He also got the elbow further up and further back, which means he got his chest more open, so this contributes to getting a better load kinetically of his arm in addition to his body. Now, this next point is a bit tougher to see, but I think it's there. Although this is the same camera angle, he is hitting from the even side here and from the odd side here, so the comparison isn't perfectly lined up. So we're working with what we've got here, but like I said, I do believe it can still be seen. And what I'm seeing here is a little more lag with the wrist on this one as opposed to this one. What I mean by the lag is this layback bend in the wrist and the stretch in the inner forearm. And it seems to me to be more pronounced on this one, and that makes a lot of sense. This was only possible because he did have more separation between the hips and the shoulders as we discussed earlier, so he built up more stored energy that he then unleashed into his swing and that allowed for a more pronounced back bend in the wrist because, and this is key to understand, this lag is not a forced motion. You have to allow it to happen by being relaxed. 
when you release your hips and let that shoulder swing, it creates this drag and lag with your hand and paddle and allows it to then slingshot forward. So if you had more energy going into your swing, it would naturally allow for a more of a lag and drag action to happen when the energy comes into that area of your body. So because he had more energy stored on the shot than he does on this one, it produced a bigger lag that he could unload into the ball. Another thing that I want to point out is that here you'll notice Taylor gets through the ball with his paddle face and it only turns over after contact to bring it around for the follow through over the left shoulder. This is how he hits it harder and also consistently deeper because he just gets through the shot better. On this one, he's turning it over during contact, even though I know he is seeking to drive it and not hit topspin. And as a result, he tends to land these shorter at times than he intended. And he often gets mishits and contacts that are not as clean because he's turning the paddle face during contact too much. And that's something you just generally don't want to do, especially when you're trying to hit a flat drive as he is here. If you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell icon so you can be notified anytime we release a new video. And the final thing that I want to point out is that notice how he gets a much more pronounced follow through on this one. This is because he had more energy stored to release as a result of his better load with his hip and his shoulder. Remember I said it all starts there so it keeps coming up again and again as the reason that things could unfold better throughout the shot. He had more to release into the shot and got his arm and paddle moving faster and he let that arm swing and let his paddle and shoulder come all the way through to ultimately decelerate well over his left shoulder. So it's not a bolted on artificial follow through. You don't just follow through for the sake of follow through. You'll have a big follow through as the result of what you did at the beginning. And then you just allow that to come all the way through. You don't force a stop too soon. You take the time and the space you need to decelerate that big power and you'll find that that swing ends up over your left shoulder. But it all started before you even started swinging the paddle with the strong load. I hope that's clear by now. I've brought it up several times because it's just so important and it's not being done often enough. A lot of players just have no load or not a strong load. On this one, he is quite army, for lack of a better word, and has an abbreviated follow through. There is a time and a place for a more controlled shot and an abbreviated follow through on different types of shots that serve a different purpose, but when you're seeking big power on a high speed drive, that's not the time for it. You have to swing at your shot if you want big power. You shouldn't muscle it. He's not totally arming it, but it's too army. I've definitely seen some forehands where it is all arm and no body. So this is not that, but it's still too much arm and not enough body. So get out there and practice a better load in your body and let that arm swing. Will you have a hard time controlling a very relaxed arm at first? Yes, you probably will, and the ball might go all over the place, but that's totally fine and that's what practice is for. Keep letting it flow and over time you'll start to learn how a relaxed motion can still ultimately be controlled and you can aim where you want. So you have to let it fly in practice and lose control for a time to ultimately gain control and power. And that's what it will take to transcend into a whole new level of power and skill and just a brand new shot that's going to be a big weapon for you out there. As helpful as we think the tips we're sharing in today's video are, there's more to achieving success on the doubles court. Want a complete A to Z step-by-step -step blueprint for playing winning doubles pickleball? Check out our dominating doubles system today. Go to doublesystem.com to learn all about it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. For more pro player pickleball tips, techniques, strategies, and more on how to take your game to the next level, please visit primetimepickleball.com. You'll find a clickable direct link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one, and until then, happy pickling. Much of this footage was captured at the Oakland Hills Tennis Club in Oakland, California. A big thank you to them for the use of their amazing facility.